Welcome to Forge Master Metal Reviews. America. <laughs> what up, Forge mates? Welcome to Forge Master Metal Reviews, the place where you can get the most out of your metal. It is July, and we haven't talked about our favorite albums of June because we were wrapping up our favorite of the year so far. So here we go with our favorite albums of June. Be sure to cross the neck of the like button if you haven't already, and subscribe. <laughs> Satyricon and Monk. Black metal legend Satyricon have finally done what all black metal bands should do, whatever the fuck they want. For 2022's June release on Napalm Records, Satyricon collaborated with visual artist Edvard Monk to create what I can only imagine is an absolutely terrifying live art. Piece. It's like at a museum or something like that in Germany or somewhere. Before I talk about the music, I want to touch on the culture of black metal a little bit. Contrary to what some of you might think, black metal is not supposed to be this dark corner of the metal dungeon based on xenophobia, nationalism, and anti-Abrahamic religion. When you put all that fluff, it's what it is, it's fluff, aside, there's much more to it. The roots of the genre come from a simultaneous middle finger to the church, which dominated many of the Nordic countries where black metal derived, and believe it or not, to death metal. So if you ask me, when a black metal band does a strange left turn into ambient or avant-garde territory, I'm thrilled. Like, it's like they're doubling down on the fuck yous. They don't care. This single 57 minute long track, that's what it is, is more akin to a collaboration of Godspeed to Black Emperor and Sun. While there are plenty of moments of droning and atmosphere, this is Satyricon, and they throw in a lot of unexpected twists and turns. I wish I could listen to this while being embraced by the art that it was paired with, man. This is terrifying. You can tell that it was embodying the art and the visuals that Edward Monk created. It's fucking haunting. I wish I could see this paired with the track. It would just be something else. You know, I, I love cinematic atmospheric records, especially this year. I've really been digging that. This album fits very nicely in my nook of droning atmospheric noise. This record gets 4.4 out of 5 soundtracks to the apocalypse, because that's what it sounds like. I gotta check that one out. I missed it. My next pick is Surreption. Your released June 10th on Unique Leader. This year's award for metal album cover that looks like it belongs in a fucking Magic the Gathering set goes to Surreption. In all seriousness, this Swedish death metal band have unleashed their fourth album clocking in at 31 minutes. Yord is all things brutal, technical, and just full of polish that the subgenre desperately needs. This album is not only played with overwhelming precision, but they incorporate elements that are essential to things like groove and great songwriting that just keeps that blistering technical pace interesting in between. It's hard to believe that there's this much music condensed into 31 minutes, and honestly, I just highly appreciate it. This is a must-listen album for fans of bands like Archspire and Decapitated and Psychroptic and Origin. Attention to detail is the biggest mark here for Yord, and I am so happy that these boys broke the silence with this album and return to form with one of the best goddamn slabs of death metal of this year 4.4 out of 5 sentient heavenly sky rings great pick dude you put that on my radar with one of the albums that we were anticipated awesome pick Ukrainian-based post-black metalers White War have released their third full-length record to much critical acclaim, and I got to tell you, we can definitely see why. Post-black metal is a genre that has a lot of room to grow, if you ask me. It's spearheaded by bands like Agaloc and October Falls, musicians in the genre pull from a wide variety of heavy and atmospheric influences to create beautiful moments that are contrasted by vicious moments of darkness. What's unforgiving about the genre, however, is that if you aren't genuine in your delivery, it's going to show. I'm very happy to say that White Ward delivers an incredibly genuine, heartfelt approach 
with their work on False Light. A lot of post-black metal bands get caught up in their own formulas with that light to dark and back again transition. But White Ward doesn't really seem to have that problem. Even when you're starting to see how they maneuver through their songwriting, they have a lot of unexpected motifs that keep this album really engaging. This is going to be a post-black metal album to remember. If you consider yourself a fan of the genre, don't sleep on it. You've probably heard it already. <laughs> 4.6 out of 5, Desolate Houses on the Hill. So glad it's on this list. If you weren't going to pick it, I certainly was. <laughs> My next pick is Kardashev. Liminal Right released June 10th on Metal Blade Records. When The Barring of Shadows came out, most of us in the metal scene could not wait for a full-length album from Kardashev. So much that I let that EP go on constant repeat just to simulate that I was getting an album from the band. Fast forward to 2022, and the metal fanboys can rejoice because all of our expectations were completely fucking blown out of the water with Liminal Right. This full length is a 59 minute journey into the somber unknown, exploring the weighty solitude drenched caverns of your brain and pummeling you full speed into the comfort of the clouds. Every instrument and production layer is intoxicating on Liminal Right, down to the reverb and delay drenched notes interspersed between every emotional moment. If I had one minor criticism though, I would say that the production, some of the time, and some of the strings do slightly get in the way of the band at times, but that bears nothing on my score here. Death Gaze has become a thing, and if you haven't heard this album yet, you absolutely need it in your life. 4.8 out of 5, Old Men Losing Reality. I have matched you with that score. Wonderful album, definitely an album of the year contender. I think that this is going to spearhead that genre. German power symphonic metalers Victorious have released an epic album about ninjas, dragons, dinosaurs, and everything we love about the Kaiju and Saban universe Combined, what the f- Yeah, imagine Godzilla, Mothra, Megazord, and the Putty Patrol are all having an epic battle in the middle of Leipzig. It's awesome! That's exactly what this record sounds like. Power Metal was something that I kind of quickly outgrew simply because, I don't know, man, I couldn't really connect with like the high fantasy worlds of sun-kissed bodybuilders fighting off hordes of trolls. Yeah, you got the bodybuilder body right now. <laughs> it started to kind of seem juvenile after I'd been through some real actual shit in my life. I respect Victorious a lot for being a tongue-in-cheek band that seems to really be incredibly self-aware, but also aware of the metal climate in 2022. The metal scene is very symphonic and cinematic right now. Victorious has that in spades. We still want catchy hooks. Yep, check. And that last but not least, epic solos, Soaring vocals, double check. All while remaining wholly campy, singing about bodybuilding tr triceratops and radioactive ninjas. Yeah, uh, Triceps Ceratops is an awesome song. <laughs> this is kind of what we all need in 2022. A little bit of escapism into a fantasy world that is more silly than it is serious. This album feels like a South Park episode, and I mean that with the highest respect. I actually started watching South Park last night because it inspired me to do it. It's just so ridiculous. Throw it on, you'll see what I mean. Dinosaur Warfare Part 2 gets 4.2 out of 5 flexing triceratops. I have to check this one out. I could use some levity in my life. This one is Artificial Brain, self-titled, released June 3rd on Profound Lore. June was just a crazy month, not only for music, especially towards the front of the month, but also because we were just buried in our mid-year list. Check those out if you haven't seen them yet. I actually missed this album, but I heard about it through a good buddy over at Metal Trenches, and I just decided to give it a spin. Good fucking lord is this album absolutely fantastic in the death metal department. Many people equate Artificial Brain as the new gold standard in the modern death metal scene, and after visiting their self-titled record, I completely understand where they're coming from there. I left this album feeling similarly the first time I heard Gorguts Obscura. This is a band that is just pushing boundaries in the subgenre, making wacky sounds and brutality work perfectly together without making the production 
and overly pristine or calculated. This is easily some of the best death metal of this year, featuring unexpected twists and turns and meaty and huge riffs and some of the lowest and brutal death growls in the modern death genre. A fantastic death metal album worthy of the wacky band name. Do not miss this one. Really awesome album. 4.3 out of 5 Moss Overgrown Robot Beatles. There we have it, folks, our best of June. We know that you can add to our list, so be sure to do that down below in the comments. Follow us on Instagram. We're kind of active on there and stuff like that. Go with the gods, Forge Masters. Make sure you bring your army of ninjas with your dinosaur riders. See you guys next time. Be well.